I just wanted to take a second to reintroduce myself to everyone um, who I am what I've been going through and what I've been through to get me where I am today um, recently I started a platform called victory over circumstance this is something that has been in my heart for the past five years but I didn't have the courage at the time or the capacity I thought I didn't have it um, to start something like this and I thought, why have I been so afraid to do something that has been on my heart? And it really is all a mindset shift. And I think in the past couple, couple of months with coronavirus hitting and with everything that's been affecting all of us, um, it finally reignited my purpose. It reignited my, my, my passion and reintroduced myself to me. I've learned so much and I've grown so much in the past couple of months and I really hope that in this time everyone is taking the time to really dive into themselves, to look inward and to really just learn themselves. Go deeper than you ever have before. This is the time for it. There is a collective shift happening, a collective conscious shift. Uh, we are being called to wake up. And if you believe in God, this is the time. This is a sport, um, spiritual warfare just as much as it is physical. So this is the time to really dive deep and become the person that you are meant to be in this lifetime. So I wanted to add to my purpose, which is to uplift and to inspire, which I hope I have been doing just by being myself. Um, and starting victory over circumstance because I really truly believe that there is victory over any circumstance if you have the mindset to have victory over your circumstance and our circumstances are temporary nothing is ever permanent all it takes is a mind shift mindset shift and you're on your way um, obviously easier said than done but I really believe in our capabilities to do that. With that said, I believe that there is healing through storytelling and that you can really get to know somebody when you know who they really are, what they've been through and how that's helped them get to where they are. And that's in essence what victory over circumstance is. How did you have victory over your circumstance? I for one have been through so much but with God, with faith and hard work, I have been able to change those circumstances in my life. A lot of the circumstances that we're in, unfortunately, are not our own doing. You know, no one is, a lot of people aren't born privileged, you know, with a mom and dad or, or a home or education or whatever circumstances that you're dealt with. But it is up to us to, to take it upon ourselves to see that we can change our circumstances and move forward in our life and build the life that we know we can have and we deserve to live. And my last point with that is, I think in this generation we are looking a lot to celebrities and people with platforms and people with large followings for advice or for inspiration when you are your own inspiration. You right there sitting there have a story that is worth telling, that is valuable, and that anyone in the world can connect to. No matter if you live in Bangladesh, or Accra, Ghana, or Texas, USA. Our stories are more alike than they are different. We're all going through the same things, just with different circumstances. And so, I just wanted to create a platform that allows us to congregate and build a camaraderie amongst ourselves as uh, amongst ourselves as women to share our stories learn from each other inspire each other and know that no matter who you are whether you have one follower or 10 million you are valuable your story is valuable and someone wants to hear it and you can inspire someone and someone will learn from you so let's be vulnerable 
because there's a real strength in that there's that vulnerability is a superpower and from doing this and asking women to share their stories i'm realizing more and more how much it is a superpower a lot of people haven't been given been given the space to express themselves or to really be themselves so when asked who are you and not defined by what you do but who are you really a lot of women just who, who am I? I actually kind of don't know because I haven't done enough work on myself. And it's a gradual thing. You're never going to know who you are because you're always going to be evolving. That is the, the hope at least. And you're always going to be learning. So you just have to know who you are and your power and walk in that purpose because we all have our purpose. So with that said, I wanted to share my personal story and how I got here. I feel like a lot of people do know my story. Um, if you follow me, if you followed me for some time, you know kind of my background. So I'm just gonna use this time to reintroduce myself and kind of just get back into it and hopefully inspire you to share your story as well. Um, my name is Mame Ajay. I am 20 years old. I live in Los Angeles, California, and um, I am just. A dynamic multifaceted multi-passionate person who works as a model and actress and I love to DJ I love music I love cooking and I love food and um, I love making connections with people and talking and really getting to know people I was born in Silver Spring, Maryland and grew up in Ghana and Switzerland mainly and then back to the US when I was like 10 years old and I would go back and forth between the US and Brazil when my father and mother lived in Brazil for like four years. Um, my dad is a Ghanaian diplomat so because of that I had the privilege of you know, living in these different places and these different corners of the earth and seeing all these different people in different socioeconomic um, like standings and, and status. And I was deeply moved by seeing how everyone, no matter where you are in the world, are going through the same things. But I feel like I'm able to relate to people you know, the billionaires down to the person who has nothing to their name. And I think that's really something important and something that I appreciate now, looking back on my, on my life, how I have seen all of that with the different places that I've lived and the different cultures that I've had to assimilate to. Um, so after I came back to the US, um, I was always modeling, I actually, got my first modeling opportunity when I was like six years old in Switzerland where my when the father of the church that we were going to um, asked my parents if I could be if they could shoot me for a brochure for the church and I my picture was like blown up into the in this church and I was like wow that's cool and not until I came back to the US and I was like 16 is when I was like wow like I really am interested in this and I really would love to do it growing up I never really saw examples of like black women on TV, like not that much, especially in Switzerland, like everything was white. So like, yeah, that, that's, that's another story. <laughs> but um, it took me coming to the US to really understand my blackness and what that meant for me as a black woman operating in this world. I think that's when, um, going back to how I got into where I am now, I then decided, okay, I do want to be a model, but I didn't know it was a viable career. I didn't know it was something that I could actually do. So in following my father's footsteps, I wanted to go into human rights law and be a lawyer and work in the UN and like affect policy. So I am new to this. I've been true to this, okay. <laughs> this is like one of my passions. Um, it's always been access to justice and access to education. That's been, my father works with 
different like governmental organizations so like I've always grew, grown up around that and wanted to have my place and my say in affecting change so in college having studied political science and um, African-American studies and a minor in business I was ready to apply to, co uh, to, to law schools to go pursue my career as a lawyer and then I got a piece of mail saying you should be in the pageant, Miss Marilyn pageant. And I'm like, you know what? Why not? Because at least it will give me the platform that I need to do what I want to do. And at that time I understood this was, wow, seven years ago. I'm old. <laughs> not seven years ago, five years ago. So, um, I realized coming straight out of college, like I need a platform. I need something to stand on if I want to be this figure, even as a lawyer, like platform is valuable real estate. So let me do Miss Marilyn and hopefully people will want to see me and want to talk to me. It taught me so much about myself, that whole process. It wasn't as cute and as I thought it would be. It taught me how to really market myself as a brand, be a brand and like just taught me so much. Project girls are hustlers, so don't you ever get it twisted. Um, that whole pa so yeah, that whole process was a thing. Um, I won the pageant, it was my first time ever, and that w in itself was a feat. I went from there, didn't have a car, didn't have mom and dad, you know, get doing anything for, for me, unfortunately, because they lived in Ghana. My father had just retired, and so um, I had to figure everything on my own. I also didn't grow up with my parents past the age of 10 because my father was state was posted in Congo at a time and in Congo there was civil strife and civil unrest so they didn't want me obviously to be in that environment and sent me to come back to the states to live with my uncle and aunt um, so since the age of 10, I've only, you know, I say all the time, like I was raised over the phone because I never got to really um, spend enough time with my parents. So I really had to understand to be by myself and just figure it out and be my own motivator, my own navigator, and just my own everything um, at a very young age. So after the pageant, um, I was going to go to Miss USA, didn't have any money, didn't have any support. I was like, let me go to solicit whatever I can do for a, um, these car dealerships and see if I can get a car leased out to me while I'm, you know, doing stuff for Miss Marilyn. Because while you're Miss Marilyn or any state uh, title holder, you have to a lot of the times go to different events and do different programs. And I had started a program called the No Excuses Youth Empowerment Program, which was basically me going to different schools, um, talking to young girls about like actively pursuing their dreams and holding workshops. And I would go up in that school looking crazy because I was on the metro with my, my sash and my crown in a box and sweats and with a beanie looking all types of crazy showing up to the school they they didn't even know who i was and now going to the bathroom put my makeup up uh put my makeup on do my hair put the sash on and the crown and then walk out and they're like oh oh wow like so i was doing a lot of that and i was like yo this is this is kind of ghetto like i need a car it was getting a little too tough so um i was like let me see if i can just go get a car leased out to me went went into the car dealership and it just so happens that the lady there um looking back she changed my life had done um the marketing lady for ford in silver spring maryland had done production for project runway in the past and her cousin happened to be the antm production or casting director so I'm just like, yeah, okay. Cause she's telling me, do you model? And I'm like, yeah, let me take a picture of you. Uh, I'm like, I don't believe you. Uh, so anyway, we took the picture. She sends it in. Two weeks later, I get a call from Tyra's people saying, we want you to be a part of the show and um, we want you in LA. My whole life changed. I came to LA, did the show, went back to Maryland and then did Miss USA 
and then come came back to Maryland <laughs> after doing Miss USA and I was like it's time to move to LA because now law school is like on the side I ain't going like at least not now so I really decided at that point that I was gonna pursue my modeling and acting career because why not now I would be damned if I woke up in my 30s sometime and I didn't do what I knew was in my heart to do because yes um, going into law was a passion of mine like that's something I still sometimes debate about but my real passion like that drives me and why I'm still in this line of work is creating and creating art I think it's really beautiful and just like to be able to express yourself with whether it's modeling or acting or singing, like the arts in general has just always been something that I love doing. So I was like, let me do this now. Moved to LA and um, decided like, this is, this is my lane. Um, and now I'm just working. It's been amazing. I have been blessed to do commercial after commercial and different campaigns and worked with all types of people that I once used to see them on TV and used to be inspired by them and some of them I can call my friends now and it's just it blows my mind still that I literally went on a whim and my life changed so that just tells me like this was none of my doing also like this is all God this was literally God showing me my way and allowing me to align myself with the purpose that he put on me to uplift and inspire and giving me the platform to be able to do that. And that's why I feel so grateful because these past couple of months kind of have reminded me what I started doing this for, why I even began. Um, it was never to just be the cute girl on magazines or just to like you know fly everywhere in first class or wear designer clothes like if you know me my friends know me I am one of the most chill people and I lot I feel like when people say that it's like yeah okay girl but like if you know me you know me um I think I'm very chill and um I never did this for those reasons I it it's awesome it's a perk it's great I love it, but um, I started doing this again, like I said, for the art of it and also for the platform to be able to reach people. Um, and these past couple of months have really just instilled in me my reason for being and for doing and like my purpose, why I'm here. And I just really want to do it justice and do it all for the glory of God and not for myself to seek validation from anyone or to make anyone else happy or to it's not for me it's bigger than me and this is just the beginning victory over circumstance is just the beginning me doing this video is just the beginning and um but I'm so grateful to have people that want to hear from me and if you've stuck around and you've seen it, um, watched the video this long, thank you. I appreciate you. And I don't take it lightly that you are listening to me and are watching me. Um, I just hope that I can do more. And so please let me know what I can do more of um, to help you or to inspire you or whatever the case is. Um, in continuing my personal story, I have also been just dealing with a lot of mental health, like just depression and just like not knowing what what I'm doing and what you know why I'm doing it. And I think that's why I felt the need to really dive inward because I felt like I was just all over the place and I was diving myself into like a real depressive state and it wasn't serving me. And I was losing myself in the industry with always being told, you're good, you're beautiful, but, but, there's always a but. And I never want to feel like I'm in any way stunted.
but I realize also as a model in, the, in like as a black model that I am operating sometimes under a glass ceiling that I'm never able to break because I might not be be pushed as much as my white counterparts or I'm not you know so that's a whole other conversation but um, a lot of that started getting to me and I think I just was just in a really bad space for some months but of course you know on the out outside you don't see that we're always posting the best parts of us on Instagram and I'm just gonna end with this is that your story is valuable your vulnerability is a superpower and it takes real strength to be able to share yourself and to really be able to be yourself because you're always being told in this world especially as a black person I have to watch how I speak I have to watch how I look I have to watch how I move and operate in this world because somebody else it might make somebody else uncomfortable or shit I might die because of it god forbid but like this is the world that we're living in so being yourself is a superpower and I hope and I pray to God that I stay in this space as long as I can and I pray that you are able to find that space in yourself to 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 claim space for yourself and be yourself as much as you can and that's why we love people like Cardi B she is herself through and through what you see is what you get so I really pray that um, with all of this you can now tell your story and be a part of the conversation be a part of the change and recognize and be aware of who you are where you are and what you can do differently if you want to be somewhere different so thank you guys so much for listening to my rant or ted talk um i appreciate you and